What's up, good people? Mark Holmes here, and as always, I want to thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, as well as you ladies, you know that this literally does not work. You know, um, I am not the college player guy. I'm just not. You know, Vosh and uh, my man Law Nation and a lot of other guys are the really good film breakdown guys out there. But, you know, we all... Well, most of us have all played football before, and of course, you know, with this body, you know that I played offensive guard in high school and nose guard in college, which they don't even call them nose guards anymore. But see, you know, they call them a nose tackle, but truly, a nose guard is a different animal. It's a position that's kind of not really thought of very highly. Typically, you're not considered a skilled player. But those guys are more important than anything else. My main man, DMV, who's only like 120 away from 5,000 uh, subscribers, definitely check him out. Let's get him over 5,000. When he's over 5,000, you're eating the chip. You're eating the Pacquiao chip there, DMV. You don't know it yet, but you're doing the chip challenge right here. Um, but the Cowboys have never, since back in the day, back in the 90s, really cared about interior defensive linemen. But my man DMV said something that that's always stuck with me, which is so true. When you control the middle of the field, you control the field. And I was hoping that last year that Quentin Bohannon, who was very raw, uh, very young, and needs to learn a lot, would be a guy that could really help us out in the middle. When you look at the Cowboys' problems on defense, the biggest problem they had was stopping the run and pressure in the middle. Let's be clear. If you can hold up the middle of the field, <clears throat> if that guy and, and anybody who's watched me for any length of time has always heard me preach this over and over again, how you get your biggest bang from the guy in the middle. It's one of the reasons why I wanted to go ahead and get Jordan Davis. And the Eagles got him. Congratulations to you guys. I, I, you know, he's, he's going to be a great player and so on. You know, But I'm hoping that... John Ridgway might end up being a steal and the perfect fit for the Dallas Cowboys. See, here's what you have to understand. If you have a great one technique guy, and I've wanted a great one technique guy for a long time, he is like having two players because a great one technique guy is going to require double teams. And if you don't double team him, he's going to blow things up. So what I want to do is I want to actually do a little bit of a film breakdown. Not too much now, just just a little bit of one here just to give you guys a taste of something that is near and dear <clears throat> to my heart. What you're going to see over here in the middle of the field, okay, is John Ridgway. John Ridgway, his draft profile, let, let's go through and get the draft profile out the way, is a big man. He is a big, you know, country fed Big man, six foot five. We know Rod Marnelli loves the length. Okay, he loves tall players. Um, three hundred and twenty-one pounds, thirty-three and three-eighth inch alarm, arms, ten-inch hands. Big guy. His prospect grade was a six point one zero. Good backup with the potential to develop into a starter. His fifty. He's not fast. When when you're that heavy, generally speaking, you're not that fast at three twenty one, a five point three. But I don't need speed as a nose. I need somebody who actually can stay in the middle. I need somebody who can clog up the middle. His broad jump was one hundred and one inches. It's actually pretty good. Uh, his twenty yard shuttle was four seven three. What they said about him, the overview. College nose tackle with the strength and length for consideration along the interior and odd front uh, defensive end. Ridgeway is more of a wrestler than gap eater when taking on blocks with at the nose. He's likely to be coveted by traits-based evaluators eager to develop the physical ingredients into a more polished product. While more of his experience has come at nose tackles, the sum of the parts make, make more sense as a 3-4 defensive end, whereas long arms and natural power would be more beneficial as an edge setter. Regardless of the position, he won't offer much health as a pass rusher, so rotational lineman with an upside is likely to become his tag as a day three prospect. Well, here's why I'm going to disagree with them as far as being a defensive end. 
because as a pass rusher, typically your nose guard is not going to get the glory. You have to understand, I learned the hard way in college that, you know, you making plays as a nose guard is not why you're there. You're there to allow the linebackers and the defensive ends to make the plays. Your job is to make sure that you hold the line. And that, my friends, has been the problem for the Dallas Cowboys for a while. When we've had guys like Tyrone Crawford who are playing, you know, defensive tackle that are light in the ass and you're doing stunts, you get caught in those stunts, you get blown out. If you've looked at many times where we've had Aaron Rodgers who's had six, seven, eight seconds to throw and the middle of the field is wide open and they can look and survey and see the guy breaking across the middle, it's all because you don't have that one technique guy in the middle holding up. And when you get a guy who's six foot five, 321 pounds, it's like an eclipse. He's going to block up the field. And if he can do his job as far as taking on the double teams and keeping that guard from getting to the linebackers, that allows your linebackers to scrape and make the plays on the field. You won't see great numbers with the nose guard, but if you understand the position, when you see four, five, six sacks from a nose tackle, you know that they're an absolute positive beast. Now, let's take a look at a couple of plays here. Now, John Ridgway, of course, he's right here in the middle, the man in the middle. Now, I want you to watch what he does here. See, this is where they talk about him being a wrestler. Okay. He engages. Okay. He's got the lean into him. He's got his hands on him. Now, watch what he does with his hands as this ball is getting handed off. This is a read and react technique. Boom. He sheds the block, and he goes and finds the ball carrier. Okay. Let's look at it again. Here it is. I call it the Z, and you can see how his legs are at that 90-degree angle, and his hips are 90-degree angle with the back, and he's got his hands out in front of him. He's going to grab a hold of of his body he's going to get in there with the shoulder pads and try and figure out where the offensive lineman is trying to take him okay and what you do is that the offensive lineman is going to try and wheel his hips around and push him out of the hole get his ass between the ball carrier and him and what you do as a nose tackle is you feel that pressure and you fight through it because that's going to lead you to the ball and you shed that center. Now watch it in slow motion. Look at this. Boom. Engages, extends his arms, and then realizes he's trying to wheel me. Find the ball carrier. Boom. No gain. Perfect technique. And see, that is what they're calling wrestling. I call it great hand strength. Okay, and here you go. You see him again? Boom. You see him basically shed the center. Here we go. Look at this. Boom. Center engages him. Center is trying to wheel his hips. See, the center is trying to push him that way. He's looking in the backfield. He's extending. He's finding the ball carrier. Here he goes. I'm going to shed and get rid of him. Watch him just literally take the center and just throw his ass. Get out the way. Boom. I'm coming for the ball carrier. And you love these long arms. And when he gets you, he's wrapping you and he's pulling your ass down. I, I'm, I'm, I'm telling you, I'm digging this stuff. Okay, here we go. He's going to actually get hit here on a double team. And he's going to ride the line and make sure that the ball carrier gets stopped. See, look at this again. Boom. He rides the line. Boom. And takes him out. And see, this is the thing. Typically, when you're getting hit by that double team, you know, a lot of these guys are getting knocked out of the hole. He is actually getting down low, and he is riding and trying to split the double team and looking for the ball carrier. Great technique. Great technique. Got to love this guy. Let's look at it slow-mo. Watch him. He gets hit by the guard and the tackle. He's right there. He's holding the line. He's holding the line. Boom. Love it. Got a couple more in here. Here you go. Look at this. You see the extension in the arms? And he's waiting, holding him up. Find the ball carrier. He's reading and reacting 
to the defense. I mean, to the offense. Boom. Engage. Extend with those strong arms. Push them back. Stay on the line. Keep your shoulder square. Find the ball carrier. And friends, if he is in any way able to do this on the NFL level, it's going to make the job that much easier for the linebackers. The linebackers, having knowing that this guy is towing the middle of the field, and even here, here we go, they talk about pass rush. All right, he's got penetration. Had somebody had outside contain, this would have been a big sack. But you see him, watch it again, slow motion. You'll see him engage, do a bull rush. He's going to bull rush, and he's going to keep pushing and pushing and pushing. Problem is, nobody's out here with outside contain, and that's where the quarterback is able to step out. If your edge rushers are out there containing, that's a big sack. But you see what he's doing is, and this is one of those things that drove me crazy with so many of our players uh, when we had Mike Nolan, is pursuit angles. And what you see here is he's not running back there where he is. He is finding the mesh point. That's what we always called it, the mesh point of where he's going to be. you got to understand that it's like a shotgun. If you are ended up shooting with a shotgun, you're not shooting where the target is. You're shooting where the target's going to be, so you have to lead it. And he is leading it. Watch the big fella. Boom. You see that? Closest point to a, between points is a straight line. He didn't look at all. In fact, I'm going to back that up. He didn't look at all in the backfield. Immediately, he gets rid of the offensive lineman. Gets rid of the offensive lineman, gets separation, and he's going right down the line. You see that? He's not going, you know, he's he's keeping his body straight. He is like a heat-seeking missile looking for that quarterback, knowing that I'm going to get him right there. I absolutely, positively love the guy. Love it, love it, love it. And look forward to seeing him on the field and hope that um, – Rod Marnelli can find a way to really use this guy. And for so many reasons, okay, I want you to imagine if on pass plays, if he is able to bull rush and be able to push the center back three or four yards on a typical pass play, with the speed that you have on the outside between um, Sam Williams, excuse me, D. Williams, Billy D. Williams, and the the speed that you have on the outside with D. Law, and you throw in a Gallimore, and you throw in an O.C., all I need him to do is make sure that the quarterback can't step up. The other guys will do the damage. You hold the middle so that way it's harder for the quarterback to see that he's got to look around and try maybe sidearm or try and get nervous. And if you know Tom Brady in Super Bowls, Super Bowls that he's lost, they were all teams that could put pressure in his face. Quarterbacks do not like to have pressure in their face. They look at that and they want to be able to step up if the pressure's on the outside. If you've got the pressure in your face, the guys on the outside are going to be able to get there and get that, that, that swipe and get the fumble or get the sack. And this is the missing ingredient, um, hopefully, that the Dallas Cowboys now have. And I've been wanting to get a one-technique guy who's lights out. Now, again, Jordan Davis, you know, that was night and day difference. We'll see if Jordan Davis drops some of the weight and stuff and if he's more than a two-down guy. But if you can put him in a rotation here, because the Cowboys' defense is going to be a hybrid where they're going to be running 3-4 and 4-3. They're going to be giving you different looks. So it's not that he's going to need to be an every down player. It's going to depend on the matchups that they're looking at. But when you need him, when you need that guy in the middle, when you're in that 50 defense, you want to have a guy who can get that separation, who can read and react, and he's got it down pat. So I hope you guys have enjoyed my little film breakdown here. Um, uh, I don't often have enough time to really sit down and do feel breakdown, but I am so passionate about having a nose tackle. He's a nose guard, guys. He's a nose guard um, here on the team that I wanted to do something special, and I've got like 10 minutes before my live stream starts. So with that being said, I need to roll my ass on out of here. As always, I appreciate each and every one of you guys.
Come on, Danny. Run it, Danny. Don't uh, fumble it. Don't fumble it. Oh. <laughs> I just said this thing. Think, Don't no, fumble no, it. No, 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 no. <laughs> Rashid, Let's go. Rashid, look. 